In this video, we're going to look at a really interesting paper by John Dogman called Brain Metaphor and Brain Theory. This is a really interesting, it's actually a book chapter and it's only 11 pages and I really recommend it. It's pretty interesting. In this paper, it goes through the notion that we have essentially evolved different metaphors for the brain over time and he talks about the current dominant brain metaphor of computation and at the end he talks about his kind of views about whether this is um, good or bad. What I thought I would do is, um, I mean, I really recommend you go and read this paper. I'm going to highlight a few brief things just to give you some snippets and just to really emphasize a few points that I think are particularly interesting. So the first quote I've got here is, Invariably, the explanation, the explanatory metaphors of a given era incorporate the devices and the spectacles of the day. Theorizing about brain and mind has been especially susceptible to sporadic reformulation in terms of the technological experience of the day. So this writing is um, a tiny bit more florid than what you might see in a typical research paper but um, I think it's interesting it's basically outlining the case that in order to understand or to try to understand the brain and mind we try to do so by creating metaphors and the claim is that we have done that but through reference to whatever the most advanced or most interesting um, piece of technology is um, at the moment. So he goes on to say, Surely it would be folly for us to regard the recent computer bewitchment of the theoretical work in psychology and neuroscience as an entirely different kind of breakthrough in the history of ideas. More than folly, it would constitute a tendency to view the past history of our subject as the stumbling progression towards its inevitable culmination in today's understanding that the brain turns out to be a computer. I think this is um, interesting, but just to kind of translate this somewhat, essentially it's kind of stating that our own current views of the brain um, within the computing metaphor isn't necessarily correct just because we believe that this is um, a good or insightful view we don't know that this is correct we don't know if it's the final view maybe it is another mere metaphor along a string of other metaphors if we look back at past metaphors, we can clearly see their limitations. Just because we can't necessarily see uh, clear limitations of the computer metaphor right now, doesn't mean that we have arrived at the correct view. Final quote for the moment. We might review the history of metaphors for the brain and mind, not with the goal of exercising metaphor from scientific discourse, which may be neither desirable nor possible, but rather to recognize our enclosure within metaphors and to identify their risings and settings as transitions that are the harbingers of insight and intellectual vitality. So in a way, this is ever so slightly um, going back on the idea that metaphors are um, kind of silly or wrong as such, um, more a kind of a speculation that perhaps the use of metaphors is somehow um, required. Maybe, maybe the, the thing we're trying to understand here is so complicated, maybe we always have to try to um, reduce our explanation or understanding 
um, towards a metaphor or, or a simplified explanation. So just to mention a couple of these, I think you, you can read the paper and you can decide what to <clears throat> focus more deeply on. But um, I'll briefly mention the hydraulic model. So this actually started uh, quite a while back, but I'll mention one particular example that was um, thought about by René Descartes. He was looking at the idea of reflexes so if you were to expose um, your foot to a fire in this image, this is a, a classic image here. Um, the proposal is that our nerves are hollow tubes full of liquid. And what happens if we expose our foot to heat, if we accidentally put it in the fire, then he proposed that um, animal spirits, so I guess this would, what we're really saying by this is that whatever we think of as the mental realm as opposed to the physical realm, he's saying that there is some interface here between the body and the mind and Descartes was particularly interested in the pineal gland as potentially being that point. Um, how convincing that is, is another thing. Um, and so he claims that the um, the animal spirits would kind of intervene and then this would cause through hydraulic action um, a, a withdrawal reflex from heat. So this is pretty interesting. It's You could easily criticise um, this at the moment, but um, I don't think people at the time would have thought that this was silly. Another idea which we've seen before is the idea of automata. So there are different ways to think about automata, um, not necessarily just in the form of um, springs and kind of mechanical devices. You could think of automata as just um, a bunch of simple devices put together in a complicated way causes interesting behavior to emerge. But for the moment, let's just stick with um, the mechanical. So the chapter has a section on this and it's got some kind of interesting, quite nice passages in there, quotes from older texts. And it portrays the idea at the time that perhaps, perhaps we are just machines that wind our own springs. And, you know, you could say clearly that this is metaphorical because if you look inside us, you can't find cogs and springs. So they, I don't believe they necessarily meant that literally. Yeah, so they asked, um, are we just an assemblage of um, springs that are reciprocally activated by one another? So I do recommend you go and look at this paper. It's only 11 pages. Um, I, you can selectively read from it, but um, definitely read the final section called The Computational Metaphor. So I'll just read um, a quote here. What yesterday would have been called a theory must today be called a computational theory, whether or not any deep relationship with computability beyond some general notion of process or transformation is established or even explicitly articulated. So this is what nowadays we would call a sick burn. So this is um, really like a, a jab at people for kind of saying, well, you're describing your theory as a computational theory um, because it's fashionable essentially. And even if it's not really clear exactly how your theory might be computational or not. So overall, I would say that John Dogman is a little bit anti seeing the, the brain as a computer. The goal that I want you to take away from this paper is not to have a really in-depth historical view of every single metaphor that has come um, what I would like you to, 
to learn about and what I think you might be excited to learn about is the um, the assertion that the brain as computer is just a metaphor and that we have had many um, metaphors before maybe the current one is incomplete and it may be replaced with um, either better metaphors or uh, more true ideas in the future. Now that assertion that the brain as computer is a metaphor is a matter of debate. Some people would more strongly claim no brains really are computers it's not a metaphor. There is very scarce evidence indeed that the nervous systems of animals for any biological mechanisms of formal symbol manipulation. So what he's saying in this quote is, um, I think that the final section, I think you might agree if you read it, you might not, but the focus um, here on the analogy seems to really be upon formal symbol manipulation. This was written back in 2001, so, you know, 19 years ago at, at time of recording. It's not an awful long time ago, but I was taken aback by this somewhat. The notion that computation is just about um, formal symbol manipulation, to me, comes across as slightly old-fashioned and I would say it doesn't necessarily reflect um, what we may have learned about um, ideas from connectionism, um, artificial neural networks, distributed computation over um, lots of neurons. Now you don't need to know about those things in great detail but I think my personal reflection on this paper is that it's somewhat dismissive of the computer um, brain as computer analogy, but that it focuses too much upon computational devices as being formal symbol manipulators. Um, so that's my thought. I recommend, I really recommend reading this paper. It's really interesting. So hope that was useful.